Hey Dream Team, welcome to the first video of my candlestick charting series. My name's Taylor and today I'm going to teach you the basics of reading candlestick charts. Candlestick charting is an ancient Japanese technique that was originally used to track the price of rice over time. However, today it's been adopted by investors to help make better investing decisions. Unfortunately, many people think candlestick charting is a technique meant only for day trading. In reality, candlestick charting can be used by any investor to make better investing choices, and the basics can be learned in just a few minutes. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, and by watching this video, you're acknowledging that nothing in this video or on my channel is to be considered advice, financial or otherwise. You're also agreeing to take full responsibility for anything you do with the information I provide. Before making any investment decisions, you should always seek a financial advisor. With that said, let's jump right in. This is a standard stock chart that I'm sure you're familiar with sometimes called a line or a mountain graph. This kind of chart is pretty straightforward. It tells you the price of a stock over time. Notice that for each time period, there is only one price shown. Now let's take a look at the same stock data using a candlestick chart. Don't worry if this looks scary. By the end of this video, it's gonna make a whole lot more sense what's going on here. As you can see, even though the graph is based on the same stock data, there's a lot more going on. Technically, this graph is telling us four times the amount of information as the previous one. Instead of a line running through a price point at each time period, every period is represented by its own candle. In this video, we'll focus on how to read each individual candle. The rest of the series will be dedicated to interpreting what different patterns of candles mean. The amount of time a candle represents depends on the graph we are looking at. For this video, we're going to assume that all the example candles we are looking at represent a day, but just know that not every candlestick chart you'll see will be that way. A quick side note. Bullish and bearish are two terms that I'll be using throughout this series and are also commonly used in the world of investing. Candles always come in color pairs. The two most common color pairs are black and white or green and red. White and green candles are both bullish, while black and red candles are both bearish. For this series, we'll use only black and white candles, but just know that some charts use green and red instead. A candle consists of three sections. The colored middle section is called the real body. The line above the real body is called the upper shadow, and the line below the real body is called the lower shadow. Once you know how to read a candle, these sections will tell you four pieces of information. The price of a stock fluctuates over the course of most periods. Every candle tells you four prices of interest within a period. The opening price is the price at the start of a period. The closing price is the price at the end of a period. The high and low are the highest price and the lowest price, respectively, that are experienced during a period. Let's look at how these appear on a candle. If a candle is white, the opening price is represented by the bottom of the real body. If a candle is black, the opening price is represented by the top of the real body. The price at the end of the day is called the close and is represented by the top of a white real body or by the bottom of a black real body. So based just on the color of the candle, you can quickly tell if the stock closed higher or lower than it opened. You immediately know that white candles are days when the stock finished the day higher than it was at the open. For black candles, it's just the opposite. When you see a black candle, you know that the price at the close of the trading day was lower than at the open. Over the course of a day, a stock's price often moves higher and lower than the opening and closing prices. That's where shadows come in. The top of the upper shadow tells you the highest price the stock reached at any point during the day. The bottom of the lower shadow tells you what the lowest price of the day was. If this feels like a lot to take in, don't worry. It'll make a lot more sense in a second when we take a look at some examples. Like with anything, this gets a lot easier with practice, so stay tuned because I have many more videos coming out where we can practice together. When it comes to candlestick charts, the size of different parts of the candle can tell you different things about the market sentiment. For example, a large upper shadow tells you that at some point during the day, bulls were able to bring the price way up, but weren't able to keep it there. On its own, that would be bearish. Just how bearish depends on the size of the shadow and its context. The same train of thought applies to lower shadows. A big lower shadow indicates that bears brought the price down during the day, but couldn't hold it down. This is bullish. Just like before, just how bullish depends on how extreme the shadow is, as well as its context. The same idea about size can be applied to real bodies. Just how bullish a white candle is, or bearish a black candle is, depends on the size and context of the candle. Take these two candles, for example. The one on the left closed higher than it opened, but not by much. The one on the right, however, closed much higher than it opened, making it a far more bullish candle. Candles with little difference between the open and close look like this. These candles are called spinning tops, and they generally indicate market hesitancy or loss of momentum in a trend. This is because there's little difference between the opening and closing prices. In other words, neither the bears nor bulls were able to move the stock price in a meaningful direction. 
Similar to spinning tops are candles called doji. A doji has no or very little real body. This means that the price closed almost exactly where it opened. Doji play an important role in some candlestick patterns. Let's look at one last unique case. These are examples of candles that are missing either an upper shadow or lower shadow. If a candle is missing its upper shadow, it has what is called a shaven head. If the lower shadow is missing, it's referred to as a shaven bottom. When a shadow is missing, all that it means is that either the high or the low of the day was also the same price as either the open or the close, depending on the color of the candle and which shadow was missing. So in the first example, the white candle's highest price of the day was also the price it closed at. When you pause to think about this, this is a very bullish thing for the stock to do. It means that people were willing to pay more and more all the way up until the last sale of the day. So in general, we can say that when a white or green candle has a shaven head, it is generally a bullish indicator. What if a white candle has a shaven bottom, like candle number two? This means that the lowest price of the day was the same as the opening price. This is bullish because the bears were never able to bring the price below its open. Third candle is simply the opposite of the first candle. The lowest price of the day was the same as the closing price. This means people were willing to sell the stock for less and less down to the last sale of the day. This is a pretty bearish thing to happen. The fourth and last candle is black with a shaven top. This means that the highest price of the day was at the open. This is bearish for the opposite reason that the second candle is bullish. The bulls were never able to bring the price above the open. All right, Dream Team, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about reading individual candles. I hope you found this video informative, and if you did, please consider subscribing. This is my first YouTube video, so I'd appreciate it if you left any feedback you had in the comments. I'll see you next time.